I'm Dr. Grace Swain, I'm an OBGYN at West End OBGYN, and this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so it's a great month to remind all of us to talk to our patients about breast cancer screening and risks. When I talk about risks, I like to talk about there being two basic forms of risk, some that are not modifiable. So your gender, you're born a woman, that puts you at greater risk. Your age, you can't change your age, you're gonna age, that's not modifiable. How old you are when you get your first menses or your first period not modifiable, your genetic history not modifiable, and we evaluate those and decide on your general risk, whether you're low risk or high risk, and we can't really alter those. They are what they are. But there's actually a lot of things we can alter in terms of your breast cancer risk, and that's where I really like to focus and really like to talk to women and empower them and give them some tools that they can do and take home to potentially reduce their risk of breast cancer. So things like Weight. We encourage women to stay at their ideal body weight or close to it. Being overweight increases your risk for breast cancer. We're learning more and more that childhood obesity predisposes you to an increased risk for breast cancer down the road. So your weight today is important, but your weight as a child is important, which translates to my conversations, talking to your kids about their weight and your daughters about their weight early on actually is going to give them long-term health benefits. We talk about alcohol consumption. We know that increased alcohol consumption in women increases their risk for breast cancer pretty significantly, particularly if you're drinking two or more drinks a day. That's a very modifiable risk factor we have total control over. Use of postmenopausal hormones. There's a lot of media coverage about hormone therapy. We do know that postmenopausal estrogen therapy does increase women's risk for breast cancer. Doesn't mean nobody's a candidate for it, but we need to talk about that. And one of the things that we talk about that we don't hear a lot about is breastfeeding as a way to reduce your risk for breast cancer. We know in cultures where there is long-term and continuous breastfeeding that those women have a lower rate of breast cancer. There was a study not long ago here that actually looked at American women who are at high risk for breast cancer based on their non-modifiable risk factors. And those women that breastfed reduced their risk of developing breast cancer, the same as the women who took the medication tamoxifen to reduce their risk of breast cancer, essentially. So a really significant risk reduction for breast cancer in high-risk women who choose to breastfeed. We're a country that's gone to a lot of formula feeding. It's a billion-dollar industry. There's a lot of push for that. Breastfeeding is not a billion-dollar industry. So there's not as much market force for it. There's not as much advertising for it as we see. And we've really slipped away from breastfeeding as our standard of feeding for our infants. And we are knowing more and more about how good it is for babies and for the moms. And one of those things is a risk of breast cancer, re reducing that risk. And you can choose to do that. You can choose to breastfeed and choose to reduce your risk for breast cancer. Probably the longer you breastfeed, the better. The exact amount of time for the maximum benefit, we don't know that specific answer. But I like to remind my mom, if you have the choice to breastfeed, not only are you going to give your babies a lot of benefit, but you're going to give yourself increased reduction of breast cancer risk.